Get rich fast with csgofast.com. ESL One Cologne semi-finals are over and man, who would have thought Liquid would make it to, to the grand final. First North American team to, to make it to the grand final of a major. Obviously, how do you feel? Well, I'm out of my words, honestly. I mean, all I have to say is that hard work pays off. You know, we, we worked so hard for this major. We had a tough boot camp and, uh, well, it's just a dream coming true for me, especially because it's my first major and I just hit the finals, but making NA hit the finals is just a special for me as well. And I mean, I, I feel like even though I'm in an American team, but I mean, we're, I'm facing my brothers tomorrow, so it's, it's going to be a special day for me. Now, obviously, you know them know them very well. Uh, we're gonna get the, get to that after after kind of going through Fnat, the Fnatic semifinal. Obviously, we have to go through that first. Now, um, yesterday I talked to Nitro, and he told me that uh, you guys uh, have the have very similar map pool with uh, with Fnatic, and you guys felt confident uh, on all the maps versus them. So, yeah, pretty much just let's go through the veto. How how confident you felt on like the individual maps? Um, going to vetoes, we knew that they would ban you because they've been banning you the whole tournament. Um, and uh, I mean, Fnatic has a deep map pool. They're pretty good in every maps. <laughs> and uh, I mean, we just decided to pick or one of the maps that we feel most comfortable, which is Cabo. We've been winning Cabo this whole tournament. So besides uh, against VP, so we lost. And I mean, I even heard that Brazil's coaches doesn't fix anything. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. But I mean. Uh, we fixed a lot of stuff on Cabo just to make sure we were prepared for this tough match against Fnatic and it worked pretty good uh, and uh, we kind of expected their pick as well. We're, we were a bit confused if they would pick Cash or Mirage but uh, in, we were super prepared for Cash. I mean they've been picking Cash in the whole tournament as well so we had this idea and uh, well uh, I mean picking Cash against a North American team that's tough but uh, yeah in the end uh, we had a pretty good luck as well in the third map if we would have to play that because it's strange, it's a very good map for us as well. So yeah, we just felt very confident after the videos. I feel like you, you'd still be pretty confident on like Dust2 or, or Mirage because Mirage, I think you, you wrecked mouse sports on it quite one-sidedly and obviously Dust2 has been your kind of go-to map before or at least before you came into, into the team and you have the double op as well. So would you, would you still be comfortable with like any of the other two maps on the third map? Yeah, definitely. Um, Dust2, we've been losing a lot in last tournaments and that's something that we really focused in the last bootcamp to fix our Dust2. And uh, Omirage, I mean, um, I mean, we, we had a tough uh, practice on Mirage during our bootcamp. We were trying so many stuff and nothing worked. And coming to the match against Small Sports, we pretty much just focused on doing simple stuff, like working on fu simple fundamentals about that map. And it worked pretty good. So, I mean, we're, we're prepared to play any map nowadays. And that, that was my biggest goal coming to this tournament, like make Liquid's map pool improve a lot and go deep. And I mean, we're, we're doing great. All right, now let's go. Let's run through through the, both of the maps that you played against Fnatic. Cabo first, losing the losing the, the pistol, but then kind of doing quite well on the first side. So yeah, just run us through Cabo a little bit. What what was it like from uh, from your point of view? Okay, um, our T side, we made a few mistakes. I believe we lost uh, Eco. I mean, we lost both pistols on that map. So it's quite a. I mean, if if we look at stats, I'm pretty sure that. It, most of the teams that lose both both pieces, they, I mean, they are supposed to lose the map. So I mean, we did an awesome job. I think we had a 10-5 half. We did a we did a few mistakes. Like we lost the eco. They broke our economy a few times. And the last round, we, in my opinion, we should have won. But all of my just went huge with the max seven. And uh, on our city side, uh, they started very good hitting B. We kind of didn't know what to do at that point. So that's why I called timeout. And we pretty much just discussed what to do to counter that. And what we made is to, I mean, we couldn't get plat control. So I just basically just told the guys, hey, if we can't get plat control, if they're doing a good job there, let's just play passive. You know, JDM, play statue. Uh, Elise, you don't you don't need to fight plat. Just play another another spot. You can play three. You can play first, and that's what we did. And it worked pretty good. So we adapt to that, and uh, they didn't know what to do after that. And uh, I mean, it was just uh, very good from us to adapt. And that that, that kind of proves that we're a team that we can adapt nowadays, and we don't choke anymore. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, just feel good, yeah. <laughs> All right. And now, uh, I kind of noticed JDM had a couple of missed shots, quite easy shots that he missed. Was there was that something you noticed or he, he might have might have may maybe mentioned in between the bats? Did he take it on himself? Not really. I mean, JDM is a very strong guy. I mean, he he's very calm. He, he never, like, complained about missing shots or anything. I mean, these two weeks that I've been with him, i never seen him raging or something because he's missing shots. He's just too much focused. And... Uh, yeah, but uh, I mean, in, in general, like he he's not the superstar in our team, but he's doing his job. He's doing his role. So, yeah, I'm 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 okay with GDM. I think he's playing great anyway. All right, going over to Cash again. Actually, losing both pistols, still winning the map. What happened there? Uh, well, I think that we made a very good start on City side. We should have won the pistol, but. We had a 4v2 situation and we kind of thought that uh, we already won the pistol so we kind of relaxed too much and uh, I was like telling GDM to smoke either the bomb and try to ninja the fuse or smoke came in but he didn't listen to me because we were like communication so much and uh, we ended up losing. They made a very nice crossfire and Dennis was, just went huge and killed all of us pretty much, all headshots. So we, we should have won that pistol but in general like our city side was very solid. They tried different stuff and we had very good reads like nothing was working and uh, we knew that they would try to start hitting mid fast and uh, me and John did that call and they did exactly what we expected so we were very prepared every single round and uh, well I don't know simple just just went huge when I mean, that guy was unreal on, on our city side and uh, coming to T I mean we had no chance on the pistol they just wrecked us to be honest but uh, and they started coming back. Fnatic is a, is a very strong team, and uh, in the end, like when we time out, we discussed to, about what what we should do, but our plan didn't work. And in, in the end, well, it was pretty much like me calling some of our strats that we never did before in that match. And uh, in the end, we just worked. It just worked pretty good. And in my opinion, Elias went huge in the end, and he was very good lurker on mid, and he pretty much won one us uh, one of the most important rounds in that match and uh, I mean we I'm very happy that we managed to close up that match. Right now talking about important rounds uh, you, all, you already mentioned uh, Simple's pretty much one the, the 1v2 the, the huge 1v2 I think it was uh, uh, the the admin the, one of the main referees uh, Messioso who, who tweeted that the communication during that round was, was kind of crazy do you remember that do you, do you remember like what the communication looked like? <laughs> Honestly, we just went yelling, and I, I was basically telling him that he's a god. He's a genius. Like he, he wants he wants people to call him genius. So I was like, yeah, you're a genius, boy. Yeah, it, I mean, simple. Just he's a he's a very strong guy. He's very tough to deal with, but he's so talented. He's so talented. And uh, I mean, for me nowadays, he's definitely one of the best players in the world. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to see what this guy can bring in the future. All right. Now tomorrow, the big grand final for you guys. A chance to grab the title at, at your first at your first major, SK Gaming. Like you said, you're you're kind of comrades uh, from from Brazil. So yeah, what do you expect from from the match, and how do you think you, you can get far? Oh well, it's it's gonna be a very tough match. They are a team that usually adapt pretty good against us. Um, I think that we played against them during the boot camp once, and uh, it was pretty good. But I mean, screams or practice doesn't mean anything we need to be 100% focused tomorrow and uh, what we're gonna do is pretty much prepare just like we've been doing so far watching demos trying to see tendencies and uh, yeah I just really uh, hope that tomorrow we can adapt to them and close matches because we I mean in the last tournament in E-League we did a good job against them but uh, we couldn't finish the match we couldn't close the match so I just really hope that Tomorrow we can fix it and maybe win the major. Win the major. Now, Liquid, have a chance to win the major. I'm going to let you off to prepare for the match and everything. So, yeah, this was uh, the interview with, with Liquid from the semifinals. We're obviously going to come back tomorrow with the, uh, with the winning interview. So, yeah, stay tuned to HLTV.org.